Hello, guys. Sorry for this long delay. Um, but I was, I was just finishing another class, so I'm so sorry for this, this long delay. Thank you so much for people who is always on time. I do appreciate that. I'm sorry that you, you will see me a little bit dark today, un poco oscuro, but light is not working. So it's like, um, that's, that's the reason why, but I would like to know if you can guys listen to me clear or is there any interference in the background? Because it's raining here and I don't know if my internet is working well. So I'm asking you, can you listen to me clear or is there any type of interference there? Is it, is it clear, guys? Yeah. Okay, probably that's that's why. So, uh, si en algún momento, chicos, de la de la clase se escucha con interferencia y no están entendiendo, por favor háganmelo saber por el chat, porque hay veces escucharlos también cuando hay interferencia es bien difícil. So if uh, you guys have any type of interference, algún tipo de interferencia, let me know through the chat, ¿sí? Para poder explicar o ver de qué manera resolvemos. Are we clear? Clear, teacher. Clear, teacher. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, now let's go uh, with today's class. Yesterday we talked about um, food pyramid, right? And we saw... Um, different parts of vocabulary in some vegetables and also some fruits. So today I'm going to ask you questions regarding to the last topic. So I want everyone, todos los que están aquí, necesito que me escriban en el chat, como decimos, how do we say ajo? How do we say that in English? Thank you, Jose Lopez. That was fast. Vanessa, thank you very much. Jose Alberto, Daniela. No, Denise, I'm sorry. Jocelyn with the Y. It is Yvette. Okay, that's good. So now, let me see. ¿Cómo pronunciamos esa palabra, Jose Lopez? Garlic. Can you make the same pronunciation, Jocelyn, with the Y? The two, the, Jocelyn, say it, yes. The other Jocelyn. Garlic. Okay, perfect. Eh, la forma en que las identifico a ustedes dos, por si no se han fijado, Jocelyn with the Y, cuando digo Jocelyn with the Y, es Jocelyn con la Y. Y cuando digo Jocelyn with the J, es Jocelyn con la J, because we have two Jocelyns here. So it's like that's... I'm sorry, what? Did you say something, Jocelyn, with the Y? No? Okay. So now let's let's see. How do we say, guys? Let me see. Um, Jose Alberto, how do we say? Let me see. Ongo. Does any one of you know? Alguien se recuerda how do we say that? Mushroom. Mushroom. Yeah, that's the way we say it. Mushroom. Now, let me see. How do we say pepino? Coconut. Cucumber. Okay. Cucumber. Okay. And how do we say... Uh, oh, let me see. Cauliflower, how do we say that? Cauliflower. Cauliflower. Cauliflower, yes. Okay, very good. Now, how do we say um, repollo verde or repollo blanco? 
White cabbage. White cabbage. Yeah, that's the way we say it. Now, the last part. How do we say, uh, let me see. How do we say, Juani, una fácil. Um, aguacate, how do we say that? Avocado. Avocado, Avocado. Avocado yes, Avocado. that's the way we say it. Now, let's move on to the part of the fruits. How do we say sandia? Watermelon. 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 Thank you very much. How do we say uh, coco? Coconut. 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 Yeah, that's the way we say it. Now, una en la que tuvimos problemas ayer. ¿Cómo decimos papaya? Papaya. Papaya. Papaya, yes. It sounds papaya. weird. Suena un poco raro when we say it because we estamos acostumbrados a decirle papaya. But in English, remember that we say papaya, okay? So, let me see. The last word, la última. How do we say uva? Grape. 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 Excellent. So, I think that we're clear. Um, it's, it's very fine that you guys understood the vocabulary yesterday. Now, let me ask you a question about the food pyramid. Um, let me see. No, I think that, that we, are, we are enough there. We are, we are fine with that. Let me see, let me try to, to share with you. Today's topic, guys, is going to be about adverbs of frequency. Have you ever heard about adverbs of frequency or when you listen to that, what comes to your mind? Adverbs of frequency, do you know that? Adverbios de frecuencia? No, have you ever heard about it? ¿Una vez lo han escuchado? Yes. Can you, can you tell me an example? Always. Always, perfect. That's adverb of frequency. So basically, guys, adverbs of frequency are words that help us to say the frequency that or the frequency about the things that we do. So today we're going to learn how to use them. And here we have a list. Aquí tenemos una lista of the verbs or adverbs of frequency. So as it says there. We use some adverbs to describe how frequently we do an activity. And when we want to say how frequently we do an activity, there it is when we use the adverbs of frequency. Ahí es cuando usamos los adverbios de frecuencia, cuando queremos decir la frecuencia con que hacemos algo. Obviously. So I will make the pronunciation of them. Vamos a hacer la pronunciación de ellos. And then... Todos van a participar, okay? All of you except, excepto Julia Yesenia, which is having some issues with, uh, with the storm because she said that it's raining at her house. So she's the only one that is not going to participate, but the other ones are going to do so. So pay attention to the pronunciation and try to pronunciate them at home, okay? So the first one is very simple, always. Usually, normally, generally, often, this one, esta la podemos pronunciar de two forms. We can say often or we can say often, either or, cualquiera de las dos, and it's going to be correct. So often, frequently, sometimes, occasionally, seldom, hardly ever, Rarely and never. Now, Jose Alberto, go ahead, please. Always. No, all of them. Uh, first, uh, always, usually, normally, generally, often, mm -hmm. frequently, sometimes. Frequent, frequently. Frequently, okay. Mm -hmm. Sometimes. Occasionally. Occasionally. 
occasionally, seldom, hardly ever, eh, rarely, es así, no, no le escuché la pronunciación. Rarely. Es rarely. Como rarely. Raro, I'll say rarely. Rarely, yeah. Never. Never. Okay, now let's go with Jose Lopez. Okay. Always, usually, normally, generally, often, frequently, sometimes, occasionally, seldom, hardly ever, rarely, and never. Okay. In the word rarely, in la palabra rarely, hay que soltar un poquito la lengua, ¿verdad? Rarely. Rarely. So now, let me see Carla. Go ahead, please. <clears throat> Always, usually, normally, generally, often, sometimes. No, frequently. Frequently, sorry. Sometimes, occasionally. No, sometimes. there, there, el estrés, no decimos occasional, we say occasionally. Occasionally. There you go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Seldom. Hardly ever, rarely, never. Okay, this one, we don't say it rarely. We say it rarely, como doble e, rarely. Rarely. No, rarely. Rarely? No, no es a, la, aunque, apare, aunque parece que es a, rar, pero no es rar, es rarely. Rarely. Like that. Thank you very much. Marvin, let's go, Marvin. Always, usually, normally, generally, often. Generally, generally. Generally, often, frequently, sub, sometimes, occasion, occasionally. Occasionally. Seldom, occasionally, seldom, hardly ever, rarely, never. Never. Okay, Monica Lue, let's go. Always. 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 Usually. 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 Normally. Um, generally. 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 Often. Frequently. Sometimes. Occasionally. Mm -hmm. Seldom. Hardly ever. Never. Ok, thank you very much. Veo que estamos teniendo problemas ahí con el, el enrollar la lengua. Rarely, rarely. That's the way we have to say it. Iris Ivet, go ahead, please. Always, usually, normally, generally, often. Frequently, sometimes, occasionally, seldom, rarely, ever, rarely, never. That was good, Iris. Thank you very much. That was good pronunciation. Now, uh, let me see. Denise? Yes. Always, usually, normally, generally, generally, mm -hmm. often, frequently, sometimes, occasionally, seldom, hardly ever, rarely, and never. Okay, now let me see, uh, Sophia Stephanie. Okay, and sorry for the for the noise for the yeah. noise. Okay, uh, always, usually, normally, generally, often, frequently, sometimes, occasionally, seldom, rarely, ever, rarely, never. Thank you very much. Let me see. Is Saul here in the club? No, Saul is not here today. So let me see Rosa Melida. 
always, usually, always, always, usually, normally, generally, often, frequently, sometimes, occasionally, occasionally, seldom, occasionally, seldom, hardly ever, rarely, never. Thank you very much. Now, I would like to know if someone would like to participate. ¿Alguien más le gustaría participar? Someone? Me, teacher. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. Always, usually, normally, generally, often, frequently, sounds like, occasionally, seldom, hardly ever, rarely, never. That was good. That was a good pronunciation. Let me see, uh, Vanessa. Always, usually, normally, generally, often, frequently, sometimes, occasionally. Occasionally. Seldom, occasionally, there seldom, mm -hmm. hardly ever, rarely, never. Excellent pronunciation. Now let's go with Rina Margarita. Always, usually, normally, usually, usually, generally, generally, uh -huh. often, frequently, sometimes, occasionally, uh -huh. seldom, hardly ever, rarely, 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 never. Never. Okay, thank you very much for participating. So now we have some examples right here and I would like you to help me reading. So I will tell your name. Jose Lopez, yes. Where you okay. Yes, I always study after class. Thank you very much. Now Rosa Melida. Rosa Melida, are you there? Hi. I usually walk to work. Okay. This pronunciation of this verb, la pronunciación de este verbo, pronunciamos la letra L. La walk, walk. 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 That's what we say. Okay. Thank you very much. Now, Jose Alberto, the next one. I normally get good marks. Carla. I often read in bed at night. Thank you very much, Marvin. I sometimes sing in the shower. In the shower, thank you very much. Now, Iris. I occasionally go to bed late. Go to bed late, thank you very much, Monica Lue. I seldom put salt on my food. Thank you very much. Now let's go with Jocelyn. Jocelyn with the with the Y. I hardly ever get hungry. There is no hungry because si tu dices hungry es con hambre, but this one is angry. Angry. And Saul. Thank you very much, Saul. Vegetarians never eat meat. Vegetarians. Vegetarians. Vegetari vegetarians never eat meat. Okay. Vegetarians never eat meat. Okay. Thank you. There you go. Thank you very much. Now. When we have guys, um, the verb be, you know, or, or when you want to use the adverbs of frequency, this is the formula that you need to remember for creating positive sentences. So if you want to create positive sentences, this is the formula that you need to follow. Subject plus adverb of frequency plus main verb, and obviously the complement. So we have here an example, Daniel always passes 
his exams. Can someone tell me why do we add ES? ¿Por qué le agregamos ES al verbo? Can someone tell me? Because is the person, third person? Because it is the third person. So it's a third person. Um, yeah, third person. Every single time that we have the third person, we have to remember that we will always modify the verb. Siempre vamos a modificar el verb. So, another important thing. Otra cosa muy importante. Esto o esta fórmula, si se fijan, el adverbio siempre va a ir en medio del verbo, el sujeto. This only happens, esto solamente sucede cuando el verbo es otro que no sea el verbo to be. Because if we are talking about the verb be, estamos hablando del verbo to be, so la posi the position, la posición of the adverb frequency changes, cambia. So as you can see, we have subject plus verb be plus the adverb. So aquí ya no va en medio. So el adverb va después del verb be. So we have to remember that. If it is another verb, we put the adverb in the middle. But if it is the verb B, we put the adverb after the verb B. Okay? So we have, he's always happy. Do you guys have any questions so far? Alguna pregunta hasta el momento? Is there ECS, el verbo do? Do. Uh, let me see. Uh, in the negative? In the negative. For example, it would say. Alguien va por ahí en la 29, ¿verdad? We can listen to you. Si podemos escuchar. Sorry. It does. Now let me see. It doesn't. Okay. We have an example there. Tenemos un ejemplo en ese caso de el negativo. He doesn't do his homework. ¿Por qué no puedo utilizar un adverbio de frecuencia ahí? ¿Alguien tiene una idea? Does anyone have any, any idea? ¿Por qué no? For it's negative. Because it is negative. Porque está negativo. Entonces, automáticamente es negativo. Yo no puedo decir con qué frecuencia lo hago. A no ser que en vez de utilizar el negativo, yo utilizara un adverbio de frecuencia negativo. Que sería never. Never. Thus is homework. ¿Sí? Si bien aquí no tengo nada negativo o una estructura negativa, pero el adverbio de frecuencia never me da el sentido negativo. Do we understand? ¿Si ¿Sí entendemos? Entonces yes. no hay en los adverbios de frecuencia eh, Negat negative sentences. No, sentences. no, no puedo utilizar negativos porque entonces automáticamente yo niego o hago negativo aquello, entonces ya no estoy diciendo con qué frecuencia. Porque si yo digo no, es porque ya no hay una frecuencia. A no ser que yo utilice el adverbio que no me da algo gramaticalmente negativo, porque yo aquí no veo la palabra not, ¿sí? Porque ya sabemos que le agregamos not para hacerlo negativo. Pero aquí never... El adverbio de frecuencia never me está diciendo un sentido negativo. Entonces yo digo, él nunca hace su tarea. Si ¿Sí? el sentido es negativo. ¿Do we understand? ¿Si ¿Sí entendemos? Yes. Perfect. Yes. So now, let's move on to the next part. Nos movemos a la siguiente parte. And we have an information very important. And something that we need to pay attention to it. De prestar mucha atención. Why? 
There are some adverbs. Hay algunos adverbios que los puedo utilizar al inicio y en medio o al final. But there's some others. Hay otros que nunca los puedo mover. So we are going to uh, try to verify that information. Volunteer. Sofia, thank you very much, Sofia. Help me reading this part right here. Esta parte acá, this part right here. Occasionally. No, no, no. From I, here. No. Um, ¿Dónde? Ah, ok. Se me había movido la pantalla. <laughs> um, y, uh, usually, normally, often, frequently, sometimes, occasionally. And here? Occasionally, I like to eat Thai food. Thai food. Okay. Thai food. okay. Thank, okay. thank you very much, Sofia. Now, what does it mean? ¿Qué significa? Que estos adverbios, these adverbs, yo los puedo utilizar al inicio, en medio del sujeto y del verbo, y algunas veces al final. So, something that you have to be really careful, algo en lo que sí tenemos que ser cuidadosos es, if you use it at the beginning, si lo utiliza al inicio, Después del adverbio de frecuencia, usted debe colocar una coma. A coma. You will have to add a coma. If you use it at the beginning. Pero si lo utiliza como la fórmula que ya vimos, sujeto, adverb, and verb, entonces no hay ningún problema. Solamente si lo utiliza al inicio, a coma, it will be always necessary. ¿Ok? Always. You will have to always put or add a coma. Okay, are we clear? Si estamos claros en esa parte. Yeah. Okay, yeah. now Jose Lopez, can you help me reading the next part? Oh, I will continue to use the following at the beginning of the minutes. Always, early, 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 ever, never. Okay. So these ones, esta lista de acá, this list, those I can never, never, ever use them at the beginning. Nunca los puedo utilizar al inicio ni al final. ¿Qué significa? That I have to follow, que tengo que seguir la regla o la fórmula that we already saw. La fórmula que ya vimos. Okay. So jostling with the why. Tell me to read this part. We use hardly ever and never with positive, not negative pairs. Okay. So uh, it says there, she hardly ever comes to my parties. What do you guys understand que entendemos when we see she hardly ever comes to my parties? What do you guys um, they are negative. They are negative. Mm -hmm. So, like, if I say she hardly ever comes to my parties, ¿qué es lo que entendemos? Ella rara vez viene a mis fiestas. She hardly ever comes to my parties. So, if I say they never say thank you. What do we understand? Ellos nunca dicen gracias. Ellos nunca dicen gracias. They never say thank you, okay? So now, it says that we use ever, utilizamos ever in questions and negative statements. So, as we can see, have you ever been to New Zealand? Cuando vemos, veamos una pregunta así con have you ever, es como, ¿has, ¿has estado alguna vez en Nueva Zelanda? Have you ever been to New Zealand? O si alguien le pregunta, have you ever played uh, football? ¿Alguna vez has jugado fútbol? So, here, si se fijan, estamos utilizando ever y 
tenemos un negativo. ¿Por qué hacemos esto? When we say, cuando decimos, I haven't ever been to Switzerland, Switzerland, I'm sorry. Nunca he estado en Nueva Zelanda o Suecia, I'm sorry. I haven't ever been to New Zealand o Switzerland. Es como que si yo estuviese diciendo, I have never been to Switzerland. I don't know if, si no, entiendo, no sé si entendemos esa parte ahí. Do we understand? It's confusing. I know, it's, it's a little bit confusing. This part is a little bit confusing. Why? Porque si le decía, como bien le decía Carla, in the previous, in the previous slide, in the presentación que vimos anteriormente que de los que te, de estos que tenemos acá these ones right here no los podemos utilizar en negativo pero existe esta palabrita que es ever que si bien no es parte de los adverbs of frequency no es parte de los adverbios de frecuencia como tal pero algunas veces los americanos o las personas nativas del idioma lo toman como parte de los adverbios de frecuencia, aunque no sea parte entera de los adverbios de frecuencia. So, in this part, o esta palabrita ever, lo vamos o lo podemos utilizar cuando tenemos un negativo. Generalmente esto solo sucede con el inglés británico, no con el inglés americano. ¿Ok? So it's, it's understandable. Si estamos entendiendo. Well, your silence is okay. more than a thousand words. So I will take that as a yes. Sure. Yes. Uh, una question. Mm -hmm. uh, en este caso, eso que nos está explicando de último, por lo general, ¿cuál es, lo más cuál es la forma más usada? La forma más utilizada es la que le explicaba a Carla, que utilizamos never como darle un sentido negativo. That's okay. American English, en inglés americano. So, eh, estas estructuras de I haven't ever, los van a ver únicamente o se los van a escuchar únicamente a los británicos. ¿Sí? Okay. Pero no quiere decir que no exista. Sí existe, pero generalmente es utilizado with British people or British accent o acento británico. So if there's no question, here we are going to have a reminder of the position of the adverbs in a sentence. And uh, we already saw this. We already saw the formulas, but this is just a reminder. Solo es un recordatorio de las formulas. Okay, so I will need Saul. Saul, help me read in this part right here. Subject, number, main, verb. Mm -hmm. Now, the sentences. I always remember to, I always remember to do my homework. Mm -hmm. The other one? He, he, he normally gets good marks in exams. He normally gets good marks in exams, okay? So we just have there, once again, the formula that we saw already, la misma formula que ya vimos. So this is just a reminder. Carla, help me read in this part, please. And advert of frequency, goes after the verb to be subject mm -hmm. plus to be plus adverb. Mm -hmm. They are never blessed to see me. She isn't usually bad uh, tempered. tempered. Okay. As you can see, no sé si ya lo notaron, but en el verb be, cuando utilizamos el verb be with an adverb, con un adverbio, sí vamos a poder utilizar la forma negativa. Solamente con el verbo to be. 
¿Por qué con los otros no? Porque era lo mismo que le explicaba a Carla y a Rosa, I guess. Sí, no sé si no me recuerdo bien de los nombres. But, I mean, these uh, adverbs of frequency are possible in the negative form only with the verb be. ¿Por qué con el verbo to be sí, con los otros no? Very simple. What's the meaning of the verb be? ¿Qué significa el verb be in Spanish? Cero estar. Cero, Cero, estar. Cero estar. So if, if I say she isn't usually bad tempered. En este caso es como que yo diga ella usualmente o ella no está usualmente enojada o mal o de mal genio, bad temper. So those are useful or we can use them only with the verb be, solamente con el verbo to be, ya que el significado de ellos, ser o estar, allow us, nos permite poder utilizarlo, but no with the other verbs, no con ninguno de los otros verbs. Are we clear? Y no hay eh, complemento ahí. O sea, eh, arriba, después de adverb, ponerle como plus complemento. Oh, yeah, of course. Uh, uh, this is... Uh, acaso, <risa> acaso lo tenemos uh, hasta acá, lo, lo cortamos hasta acá por el hecho de que para que ustedes vean exactas las tres cosas o la, la posición, la posición exacta. Pero, Pero se puede solo decir como... She isn't usually. No, 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 we can, we cannot say that. No podemos decir eso because doesn't make sense. We obviously need a compliment, ¿sí? O, o evidentemente necesitamos un compliment. Okay. All right. Now let's go and let me see Jenny with the Y. Tell me reading these two sentences, please. Jenny, or Jenny or Jocelyn? Oh, Jocelyn, I'm sorry. Jocelyn, yeah, I forgot. Only the sentence. Yeah, the first two sentences. Okay. She can sometimes beat me in a race. Mm -hmm. I would hardly ever be unkind to unkind? someone. Unkind to someone. Okay. So this, this, this formula, esta formula is about modal verbs, verbos modales, en los cuales tenemos have, will, must, might, could, would, can, should. We have a lot. Tenemos varios. So um, you will see, you will probably see some examples Van a ver algunas, algunas ocasiones en las que van a ver algunos ejemplos así. Some sentences or if you like to read, si a alguien le gusta leer, you will probably see those structures. Probablemente vean esas estructuras. And it's important that you know how to use them, cómo utilizarlo. So le llamamos models porque son auxiliares. Tenemos the subject, we have the subject, then the auxiliary, auxiliar o model, can, then the adverb of frequency, and then el verbo principal. So, if I say, she can sometimes beat me in a race. Es como, ella algunas veces puede vencerme en una carrera. So, cada vez que tengamos un verbo modal como can, would, might, could, should, will, have, or must, cuando tengamos uno de esos, right after, a la par del model, vamos a escribir o vamos a poner el adverb of frequency. Okay? So, do you guys have any question? ¿Alguna pregunta que tengamos? No questions. Okay. So let's move on to the next part. And in this part, in esta parte, it's also necessary that, that, that you know or that you understand 
that we also have que también tenemos expressions of frequency, expresiones de frecuencia. Okay. We have and what is the question? Cuando alguien le pregunte how often, esa es la pregunta que le hacemos a alguien para saber o utilizar adverbs of frequency. Si alguien le pregunta how often, significa qué tan a menudo. So we have an example here as it says, how often to ask about the frequency of an action. We place it at the beginning of the question. So, para preguntarle a alguien, ¿qué tan a menudo hace ejercicio? It's like, how often do you? Y luego el verbo. Oh, we can see here, are you, would they, he, she, it. Utilizamos todos los personal pronouns, pronombres personales, e, what is that? An auxiliary. Sí, la auxiliar. How often does she... No, sing. How often do you uh, cook? How often do we exercise? See, ¿Sí? this is the formula or the pattern. Se la formula o el patrón que tenemos que seguir para poderle preguntar a alguien la frecuencia. So, for example, how often do you go to the cinema? ¿Qué tan a menudo vas al cine? So if someone asks you, automáticamente cuando alguien le pregunte, how often, you will answer, usted va a responder, I usually, I never, I always, I rarely, I generally, I occasionally, using the adverbs of frequency. Are we clear right now? Si ¿Sí estamos claros en esto? Yes. Perfect. Yeah. Now, in the expressions of uh, frequency, las expresiones de frecuencia, ¿cuáles son? We have once. Eh, when you're learning English, cuando estamos aprendiendo inglés, podemos decir one time, para decir una vez, one time. ¿Sí? Es entendible o sí se puede decir, or two times. Pero si usted quiere sonar un poco más nativo, en vez de decir one time, para referirse a una vez, Oh, one time. Usted va a decir once. Once. O si usted quiere decir two times, dos veces, en vez de decir two times, que sí es, es entendible, pero si usted quiere sonar more native, más nativo, usted va a decir twice. Para referirse a dos veces, twice. Del tres para allá, sí es, eh, usted puede decir three times, four times, five times, six times, and so on, and so on, and so on, okay? So, and when we use those, cuando utilizamos eso, también podemos agregar como estas palabritas, like once a day, una vez al día, once a week, twice a month, three times a year. Una vez al día, una vez a la semana, tres veces al mes, o cuatro veces al año. Okay? So those, we call them expressions of frequency. A eso le llamamos expresiones de frecuencia. Are we understanding? Si ¿Sí estamos entendiendo, it's understandable, or do you have any question? De esa manera entonces responderíamos también, ¿verdad? La, la pregunta anterior. Yeah, momento. you can say, sí. it, so, si alguien te pregunta, how often do you go to the cinema? Tú decides si utilizar adverb of frequency or expression of frequency. ¿Sí? Tú decides. No se puede combinado. Uh, yeah, actually, like, for example, I could say, let me, let me give you an example. Vamos a ver acá. I usually the cinema twice. Yo podría combinar los dos y podría, si alguien me pregunta, how often do you go to the cinema? Yo puedo decir, I usually, usualmente voy al cine dos veces al mes. ¿Sí? Puedo combinar. 
adverb of frequency with expression of frequency. Puedo combinar las dos, or yo decido si utilizar just the adverb of frequency or just the expression of frequency. It will be up to you. Esto es, va a ser decisión de cómo quieran responder. Okay? But it's possible, Carlos. So is, is there any other question or are we clear? It's clear. Clear, perfect. So let's move on to another part in another expressions of frequency. Tenemos otras expresiones de frecuencia. So we can say every evening, every morning, every night, every day, every weekend, every Saturday, every Monday, every week, every year, and so on, and so on, and so on, ¿sí? Todas las tardes, todas las mañanas, todas las noches, o cada día, cada fin de semana, cada sábado, and so on, and so on. So we can use those expressions of frequency. Recordémonos, son expressions of frequency. So it's not, it's not the same. Adverb of frequency as an expression of frequency. They are synonyms, but not the same thing. Are we clear? Okay, I think that we're clear. So, Jose Lopez, I would like you to help me reading or making that pronunciation. Well, this one's. Every, every evening. Every morning, every night, every day, every weekend, every Saturday, every Monday, every week, and every year. Thank you very much. Monica Lue, do the same thing, please. Every evening, every e morning. Evening. Uh, every evening, every morning, every night, every day, every weekend, every Saturday, every Monday, every week, every year. Every year. Thank you very much. Now, Saul. Every evening, every morning, every night, every day, every weekend, every Saturday. Every Saturday, every Monday, every week, every year. Sí, lo habías pronunciado bien al inicio, Saturday, y luego dijiste Saturday. No está incorrecto. Okay. Saturday es la pronunciación del día, pero en acento británico. So it's not bad, no está mal. So, but in English or uh, American accent, con acento americano, es como un poco más... Más Saturday. Es como más elevado, un poco más fingido. Okay? Saturday, 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 Monday. Weekend. Yeah, yeah, like that. So jostling with, uh, with the Y. Every evening, every morning, every night, every day, every weekend, every Saturday, every Monday, every week, every year. Jose Alberto. Every evening, every morning, every night, every day, every weekend, every Saturday, every uh, Monday, every week, and every every year. Marvin. Every evening, every morning, every night, every day, every weekend, every Saturday, every Monday, every week. Every year. Carla. Uh, I don't know if you're saying something, but we cannot listen to you. <gasps> Sorry. <laughs> every evening, every morning, every night, every day, every weekend, every, every Saturday, Every Monday, every week, every year. Okay, thank you very much. And now we are we have here the whole information. This is toda la información resumida about the things that we just saw. 
As you can see there, we have uh, the uh, expressions of frequency. We have uh, the different things that we can use. So in this part, what we're going to do, we're just going to read these sentences. Solo vamos a leer estas oraciones. So I will ask, let me see. Iris, I will ask you to help me read in the first one. Then Denise with number two. Jocelyn with the J, number three. Rosa Melida, number four. And the last one, Rina Margarita, number five. So please. She visits the decent Switzerland a year. She visits the dentist twice a year. Okay, number two. Number two. He goes to the gym three times a week. Okay. Number three. I call her daily to make sure she is fine. Thank you very much. Number four. There is a, a leap day every four years. Okay. And the last one, number five. We play, we play for mon, monger mm -hmm. every month. We pay our mortgage every month. Okay. So guys, with the information that we just saw, is there any questions so far? Alguna pregunta? Mortgage. Mortgage. Mortgage es como eh, deudas. Mortgage. Yeah, every month. So if there's no any, any other question, we are going to do this activity right now. So I would like you to, uh, to write the answers on the chat. Si sí, escribir las respuestas en el chat. So what you have to do is just put the words in the correct order. So we have four, tenemos cuatro. So for you to make it uh, in order, para que se vea ordenados hasta que ya tenga las cuatro, envía, okay, the answer. So you just have to unscramble, si ¿sí? desenredarlas y ponerlas in the right order. That's what we're going to do. We have four minutes to complete that, okay? If you have any question regarding to anything, ask the questions. I'm sorry, what? Did you say something, Jose? No, I just said that I'm Ah, 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 okay. <laughs>
Are you guys working on the on the sentences? I haven't received anyone yet. We still have one minute. Okay, we have the first person who is Saul. Okay, then, okay. Excellent, Saul. Very good. What about the other ones? Okay, what about the other ones? It's only Saul. Okay, we have Carla. Carla, are ready? We have Jocelyn with the Y too. No, with the J, I'm sorry. Okay, what about the other ones? I'm still missing some others here. I didn't understand that one, Carla. Theo, Aleyas, watch TV in English, I don't understand. Okay, Jocelyn with the Y, I can see yours too. For dinero. So sometimes that happens, guys. Algunas veces se nos ponen palabras in Spanish because we have our phone in Spanish. Probablemente tengan su teléfono in Spanish. That's the reason why sometimes there's some, some mistakes. Jose Lopez, I can just see one but they were four, so I don't know if you worked on the other ones or just one. Dinner, yes. <laughs> yeah, that usually happens. Okay, so I think that um, Jose Alberto, okay, we have yours too. Thank you very much. Okay. Marvin, thank you very much for that. That's perfect. So we have uh, Jose Lopez. Okay, we have another one, Rosa Melida. Rina Margarita, thank you very much for that. And she usually, y playa, I, I don't understand. So probably you have, uh, your cell phone in Spanish, and that's why you're having those mistakes there. Okay, so we are going to go, guys, with uh, with the first one. No, it's fine, Carla, I understand that. So we're going to go with the first one. Who would like to help me? Any volunteer that would like to help me with letter B? Let me see, I can see Jose Lopez. If we sometimes have pizza for dinner. Sometimes, okay. Sometimes have pizza for, pizza for dinner. Sometimes have pizza for dinner, okay. For dinner. For dinner. What about letter C, Jose Lopez? Where where, where you? You help me with letter C. I never talk to strangers. I never talk to strangers. Thank you very much. What about letter D? Okay. They always watch TV in English. They 
always watch TV and what about the last one? La última. He usually plays with friends in the park. Ace with her with her friends in the park. Okay, so there we have the answers. Thank you for those who always participate. So I heard escuché que alguien por ahí dijo she. Recordemos que ella decimos she. So thank you so much, guys, for always participating. So that's going to be pretty much all for today. Uh, I just want to say thank you for being always on time and for coming or attending to the class today. Remember to keep working on the platform. If you have any question regarding to any exercise, let, let me know through the WhatsApp group, okay? So I will help you there. So that's all for today's guys. See you guys tomorrow in the same time by the same channel, okay? So Bye. have Bye. Good night, teacher. Good night, teacher. Good night.